Hello. So excited. <sighs> so my first guest today is James Harkness, a such an amazing friend of mine. And I'm so excited that he's going to be here. We're going to be talking about a few things. <sighs> what I want to know is his relationship with dance in the past, his relationship with dance today, and what he thinks his relationship with dance is going to be in the future. And what's innovative in the dance industry as far as he's concerned? What does he see for the industry in the future? Interesting. Anything innovative happening that we all need to be paying attention to? We'll see. We'll see. Um, what else? What else? Oh, and also his recommendation on who I should interview next. Stay tuned. He's almost here. Hi, James. James Harkness, Lord Harkness. You know what? I enjoyed that so much. I'm going to turn my video off and let you sing that again so that I can make a better entrance. And go. James Harkness, Lord Harkness. Hello, my child. <laughs> oh, friend, so nice to see your face. Yeah, what's happening? Man, in these <laughs> pandemical times. First of all, that man, that said a lot right there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a squeak training. <laughs> that would have been the op. Well, yeah, maybe you got to take it down so you can take it up. Indeed. Indeed. Hey, you got to take it down so you take can it take it down. Take it up, baby. So yes. thank you so much for lending me your time for this. I am truly interested in connecting with my friends again because I just got over COVID. Yes, this is very important. <laughs> and um, I realized in as much as I was lucky to have a, a mild case mm -hmm. that if I didn't have a mild case, there's so many people that I know. My network is so wide and I haven't touched base with any of, of these people you know, for quite some time. I mean, yes, so social media, like I would answer your posts and things and things, but we haven't had a face-to-face -face and we've worked together extensively in the past. And then as a professor uh, of dancers and actors, I want to introduce my, net, my network to my students and students that I don't have yet. And so this is me just sitting down with my friends and asking you about your relationship with the arts. And I think the first set of interviews, especially with Black History Month, are my Black friends. Yo, because <clears throat> I, I talk like that all the time. That's right. I wanted to start with, with the dance community. Yes. yes. Oh my God, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, this- Perfection. This named by Moore, it's, uh, his name's Robert Moore. He created this series called Brown Like Me. I'm not pointing to my crotch. It's Brown <laughs> Like Me. Yes. And uh, he's taken iconic characters like this is from Peanuts, of course. Um, he's also done it from the Jetsons. And I think he's tackled the Flintstones, but definitely the Jetsons and some other things where we, ain't see, we didn't see no Black people. And, and the Black people that we saw in Peanuts was the one. And he sat, they sat him on the other side of the table yes. during holiday dinners. Alone. That, alone. So even this the dog was on the other side. Always, but, you know, whatever. On the other side, which is where they wanted to keep us. And truth be told, tell the truth. So he's done this really wonderful series of paintings and limited edition T-shirts, and I had to have them. Yeah, that is great. I got to look him up. What's his name? Robert Moore, um, but on Instagram, it's by Moore, B-Y-M-O-O-R-E. He's pretty, pretty great. I like that story. So let's get into you, my friend. Okay. My first question is, tell us about your relationship with dance in the past. Uh, so Ooh. run us through. When did it happen? Yeah. How did you get here? How did I get here? Uh, I rented a, I broke up with somebody and we rented an apartment and this is how I got, oh no, not here, here, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Man, dance, 
dance. Um, you know what? First of all, we all, this is something that's interesting. We all dance. We all move. Every single infant that is born, the one of the first things they respond to beyond their parents' voice and all that stuff is sound and music. If you sing to your baby, your baby moves. When they hear music, they move. We all move. It's what we respond to. So it is something that is at the, actually the core of everybody. Um, then you have other people that that continues in this path. So I was always singing and dancing, running around the house, not not even knowing what I was doing. My mom told me like one of the first songs I ever sang was this song called Mr. Big Stuff. Mr. Big Stuff. Who do you think you are? Oh, yeah. You were supposed to do that part. Oh, Oh, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good Lord. Get on it, Krisha. <laughs> and um, I, but I've always I've always danced and I've always jumped off of things and flipped and, and spun and everything. So and in my elementary school in like fifth grade, I think I choreographed a, a dance piece. I didn't know what what it was. It was like you made up a dance. We made yeah. up some steps um, for the high for the, the talent show. You know what I mean? It wasn't until I got into high school when I was a gymnast where I was watching the dancers work down in the bottom of the gym for the end of the year recital. We were working on the gymnastics exhibition. They were doing choreography for their end of the year recital. And I was watching them. I was sitting on the parallel bars where I was supposed to be doing exercises, but I was watching the dancers. And I was like, that looks like fun. I can definitely do that. That looks more fun than being on these damn parallel bars because <laughs> I didn't really like them. Um, <clears throat> so I talked to someone who I knew was in the group and they were like, all you have to do is audition. And I was like, oh, they're like auditions are coming up, such and such. such. I was like, cool. Mom, can I uh, audition for the dance team? Mm -mm. <laughs> and I was like, but, and she was like, no. And I was like, okay. And I waited a couple of day or so. And I was like, so can I audition for the?" <laughs> and she finally let me do it. And that shifted my life. Like my life was already shifted because I used to watch anything that was dancing on television. I was like. Yeah. And then I would record it and then I would try and do it. Or if I didn't record it, I would still try and do it, which is how I learned how to tumble. I would watch the gymnastics and then I would go into my backyard and figure out how to do an aerial or do a back handspring. Oh my it, God. Well, that's just how, how I did. So that's so when my- So unsafe, James, without someone, nobody else, so unsafe. Mm -hmm. But that's how I learned. And then I got, later on, I got the proper techniques of things, but I, okay. I was that kind of kid. I was just like, well, how do you do it? So I'm yeah. going to figure out how to do it. And then I started taking dance classes in high school. And really, it was like the lights had already been on, but they took the filters off and everything was bright and in beautiful color. And that summer, that's, so that was my freshman year, the summer we got the, the new group of, of Mu Delta Chi, it was called Bel Air High School, which is where I'm from in El Paso, Texas, had their dance team, which was called Mu Delta Chi. And Miss Dillon was a teacher and she wanted to kind of make it feel like a sorority. And I was like, well, uh -huh. yeah, okay. But she wanted to make it feel like that. So she gave it that name, which was interpreted Modern Dance Club. Got it. And we got to know each other that summer. And I had, it's still one of the best summers of my life. Mm. Because I was, not only was I dancing and we were making up, like we would go to the park and make up dance steps in the middle of the park. Or we'd go to each other's homes and, and work on choreography in the backyard. We did to raise funds to buy costumes and stuff like that for the next year. We did a car wash at the Pizza Hut. And <laughs> it was at the Pizza Hut. And we were doing dances. Like that was part of the way of getting cars to come in is we would like do some of the stuff that we had choreographed in the middle of that parking lot. And while people were, we were waving cars in. I never had a, another summer quite like that. Yeah. And it was also because I found myself in an environment where no one cared about 
me beyond what I brought as a dancer. That was what mattered. And the person that I was, they didn't care what color my skin was. They didn't care whether or not I might be gay or might not be gay. They didn't care about any of that. It was like, we're here rooted in dance and joy. And that's right. it. Dance and joy, dance and joy. Hallelujah, dance and joy. Uh, so that's how things started. <sighs> and again, television, TV, Debbie Allen, fame, Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say. <laughs> Paula Abdul, Michael Jackson, Debbie Allen, Debbie Allen. Janet Jackson. And then like anything, MTV, uh, American Music Awards, the Oscars, the, the, the Grammys, the PBS specials, anything that had danced to one of my favorite TV shows, I saw the gold, yes. Star Search, huge thing. Oh my God, yes. Could you, do you remember Star Search? Yes, I auditioned for Star Search with my friend Martha Hawkins. We, they had a dance contest at our local amusement park and we won the dance contest and the prize was tickets to Los Angeles and an audition for Ed McMahon's Star Search. Oh my I, 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 don't, I don't even tell this story because I, I don't forget about it, but it wasn't a good audition, <laughs> but it was a really cool experience. I still have somewhere there's pictures of Martha and I, because uh, I choreographed the piece and I designed the costumes. I, I said what we were going to wear. I didn't design the costumes. Um, we wore yellow and black. So we got, they put us on an airplane. They put us in a hotel room. They drove us to the audition and it was like this big thing. And we were these two little kids from El Paso, Texas, with no, like, no one was there with us except who was our chaperone type person. And you go into this room and it was the first time, oh my God, I really not thought about this. It was my very first audition. <gasps> Aside from auditioning for the, to get into the dance team. Right. But that was different because it was high school. And, yeah, you know. this is professional. This was professional. This actually was professional. Had we gotten on, money would have been involved. Had we, you know what I mean? And I had never thought about it until now. And I, I bombed. Martha did great. It was me. <laughs> uh oh. I messed it up. Oh. Because I was nervous. There was people sitting behind a table. And we were in a big room and they were, and they were like, Oh, hi. And we were like, I don't even remember what we said, but then it was like, okay, it's time to dance. And, and nerves completely took over. Wow. I forgot all my steps and walked out of the room. And I was just like, <sighs> hmm. and we had the rest of the day. I don't remember what happened for the rest of the day. We probably walked around. I was totally in a daze because I knew I messed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, flew, back like, home. Oh. flew back home. And yeah. And wow. interesting about that is that that type of thing followed me around for a minute. Yeah. About like auditioning and, and how to audition and what. I, I was not the best auditioner. We can talk about that later. But so that was like how dance really came into my life. All of those things were my foundation of dance. Hmm. Um, wow. But I like the, I like that you started with dance and joy. Absolutely. And you know, I'm and going I'm into the, prof dance. sorry. What, what I'm you still with dance and joy. Good. Excellent. Because People lose joy in the, in the meantime while they're running after a resume. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure I'm, I've had moments of losing joy without a doubt, but Same. that's so important dance and joy. Cause the why, why, what's what, then what, for what, to what yeah. end? So let's talk about your professional experience, you know, <laughs> up until now, tell us what you're doing now. So everybody knows, but right you know, now. How did, how did I'm you get I'm talking here? to you. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm talking to you, Grisha. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> right now, aside from being uh, 
course, in the middle of a pandemic and Broadway is shut down. But the show that I am attached to is Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations, the legendary group, The Temptations. And I am blessed to play one of The Temptations, which is still still something that blows my mind. It really, truly does. I play Paul Williams, and uh, that is my job, but it's also my love, and it's also my joy. Nice. Um, and you, you and I did what show together? <clears throat> like a blade of corn, like a honey bee, like a waterfall, all a part of me. You remember those, those, like those verses? Color purple. <laughs> It ain't never going to go nowhere. It's not, oh, my God. Linda you Twine. Linda has, Twine? She put us through our paces. And how Linda Twine would be like, can we all agree on the pitch? Can we all agree on the pitch, please? Thank you. So shady. So perfect. And so, so true. And so true. So true. Can we all Why, agree you know? on the pitch? Why lie? <laughs> so, but, um, yeah. Color purple. We were in Aida together, no? Yes, and but like color purple was the thing because that yeah. that shifted us into another thing. But yes, Aida for sure. Yes, and that was a lot of dancing. That was a lot of dancing. Thank you, Wayne Salento, and literally thank you, Wayne Salento. You'll probably never ever see this, but thank you, Wayne Salento. Yeah, not just because of the dancing, because the dancing was everything, but because of the acting involved in the dance, the storytelling of dance. I have said this many times and I want to say this a lot more. I am forever grateful that Aida was my first Broadway show because I came into a show where the ensemble is significantly important in that show. The ensemble was given direction. We had to be part of the storytelling. We had to create those worlds for the principal actors to live in. That's right. A lot of times when you're in an, a Broadway show and you're a part of the ensemble, you've, you're a set piece in the many ways it feels like that. So you're singing and dancing and you come out and you do the da 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 do, 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 move a set piece. Maybe you walk off stage and you're done. Da, 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 da. And, yes. With Aida, as you know, it wasn't about that. You've been in a bunch of Broadway shows and mm -hmm. your bio will be underneath this. So, you know, but you're also a choreographer. Mm -hmm. So... I remember doing your choreography. What was the, I, was it, it was Aida, and it, was it Aida you choreographed? It was Aida, first? me, me, Rhett, and, and Kira, when we did that piece. That's right. That was a good piece, too. It was a good, everything that you choreographed for Easter Bonnet and, what was the one in the fall? Uh, Gypsy of the Year. Gypsy of the Year, that Broadway show, like... Everybody came together to choreograph and do skits and for, to mm -hmm. raise money. Everything that you did was beautiful and it was all dance and it was, con it was contemporary, it was, it was classical and it was commercial all at the same time. And I, I remember doing your piece when we were in Purple, right? The, the, that, the piece, yeah. Did the, I do the, your piece? That, it, was, it was the piece, yeah. Um, no. I, you didn't do that piece, but I had you come in and watch the piece and and be my eyes. Okay, it okay. That, it was that last. It was the last. The the strike had happened. There was a lot going on at that time, and so it was the the pressure that song, the pressure that that I had done. That's right. That's um, right. That's right. <clears throat> That Latrice was. That's right. Latrice was the sen center of that. She oh my was the God. center of that piece. But I remember you said it reminded you, especially that entrance piece that I did for her at the beginning of Vespers. And I had never seen Vespers. I didn't know what it was. So I had to go and take a look. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very special, special piece. 
Um, For those people that are listening that don't know what Vespers is, Vespers is a piece that I did in the Ailey Com- Company choreographed by Ulysses Dove. Please look at it. Please look at it. <sighs> One of the best things I've ever done. Anyway, but you infuse this drama and this the and the acting and the storytelling in your choreography. That's why it is so, it is just so rich. Uh, your choreography, you. you know, and I know that you're, I think you identify, please tell me if I'm wrong, as an actor, dancer, singer. Absolutely. But I mean, we always kind of in our career as we go, it kind of shifts depending on what we're doing most of, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And yes, then the I older do. you get, it goes maybe a little less of that, a little more of this. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. have turned into a choreographer and you recently, was it recently or a few years ago, choreographed and directed The Color Purple? Uh, it was, it was a more, it's been, it was 2016, I think, 15, right. 16. Yeah. And that. And where was, was this production? In Sarasota, mm-hmm. Florida at the West Coast Black Theater Troupe. Black Theater. Okay. Sorry. And. Um, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. So friend, question. Yeah. Yes. What is your relationship with dance and the future, you think? Well, before we get to the future, <laughs> my yeah. relationship my relationship with dance like right now, right now is interesting because I am at a place as you're talking about getting older and how things shift <clears throat> where I'll go back a couple of years when I was doing Beautiful the Musical. And I found myself in a position in a show where I was singing a lot more than I had had the opportunity to. And I've been singing for a long time, but dance is my foundation. Though I was singing before I was dancing, because I don't come from the kind of black background where we were in a choir in church and we were singing, I don't come from that type of black background, which is a whole nother, conversation but so singing was not my root in that way dance is the thing that ground me into where i am now and everything sits on top of that so now i found myself in this place where i'm singing stuff in a broadway show with amazing singers playing part of the group the drifters and and acting because though I didn't have any lines in that show, Mark Bruni, our director, he gave me things to do. Like we all had little moments, but I took my moments and I was like, okay, I'm not just gonna walk on stage in another costume and just be on stage, even though I don't have something to say. And I'm not gonna do stage business just to do stage business. I was like, I have to have a purpose of this. And this is stuff that I have learned from going from Aida into the color purple, into guys and dolls, into the things that I've done, into all of the on-course productions I've done and watching Patti Lapone work and stuff like that. Like all of these things that I've had a blessing to do. When I got to this moment in Beautiful the Musical, one thing. Mark Rooney, there was a scene uh, where the Shirelle, we're, we're in NBC and the girls, are, the Shirelles are doing, um, we're filming a television show. So the scene before with the Carol King and all of her friends, they were all in Vermont. So Vermont is snowing. So snow is falling behind the window on stage. Nice. So that shifts right into shooby dooby 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 doo wah wah. Shooby dooby 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 doo wah wah. Be, be. Okay, so there's no time to change this, that get the snow off the, the floor. So I remember we were sitting in rehearsal and I remember watching it happen. I was like, someone's going to have to sweep up the floor because they can't have just snow on the floor. So they next day, after I thought that, so we're in morning rehearsals, morning note session, and Mark Bruni goes, so James, we're going to make you a janitor. So at that scene, we can have some, you can sweep up the snow. I was like, huh, well, goodness gracious. Yeah. So in that moment, my brain was like, okay, 
A, I told you so, but no, you know, I didn't say it to anybody out loud, which I thought was hilarious. Um, B, <laughs> I went, how do you, how do you do this? Was my, my secondary thought. I was like, because I could just come out and sweep up the snow because that's my only purpose in that scene. But I was like, but as an actor, going back to Aida, everything that you do is seen and important and can carry the scene, can help. It, it can help season the scene. So I, I went through this. There's a reason I'm telling you this topic. So I went through going, OK, you're black. You're in NBC. You're not the only black person in this scene. There's another black person in this scene who is close to the talent. He's holding a boom mic. He's working in, in production. Why are you, as a young black man, sweeping up snow? Why are you sweeping up garbage? And I had to give myself a reason for that. So I went, okay, this is the time period where we're in the early 60s. And I'm not, I didn't get drafted to go into the war. I could, cause I could have been there. So why am I here? And I was like, you have to have some kind of, something has to be wrong with you that people can see and not go, well, you have a record or you have a this or a drug problem or something like that. So I was like, ooh, I gave myself a limp. <laughs> So that I had I had had a bout with polio as a child. So I couldn't go into the service. There were things I couldn't do. They weren't going to have me up front with a with a boom mic or doing anything like that. But they gave me a job. So I came in and I, I limped across the back and I swept up the snow. And people were like. What, wait, what happened? Who is he? What's going on? What, what's, what's the background with that character? And the cast named him. They named him, Char, they named him Charlie. And I was like, who? And that was, that was such an important thing. So, and I did that with every character in that show that was given to me. Every character had a backstory. Um, I was a waiter at the Bitter End when Carol King is singing It's Too Late. So I was like, why am I a waiter? Who, who's my waiter guy? And then I was like, oh, okay, I know. I'm an aspiring singer. For me, that's what's like, I'm an aspiring singer. My cousin owns this joint. He's giving me a break. And I want to be at this joint because this is where all the people come and sing. Ultimately, I want to sing here. Yeah. And so it's my first night on the job. And I want to make a good impression. And Carol King is singing. So my whole, I was so tense and, and uptight and nervous and forgetting shit and, you know, stuff like that. And then Carol started singing and it stopped me. Because they were like blocking. They were like, just go stand over there by the, by the pole. It's like, you know, stage business blocking. And I was like, why did I stop here? Why didn't I just keep going? So I had to make it into something. So I would turn and go, that's it. That's what I, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. Jesse Mueller one day, she, she's so, she's so great. And she, one day she turned in playing and surveying the audience in the bitter end. And she saw my face because I purposely also for, for blocking, made sure I was in the light so that the light was on my face. I mean, remember, remember, remember we used to play that game, Catch the Light? Catch the Light. I learned that in Vegas. I learned that in Vegas in the show that I was in. My, my, my dance partner, Chet Kelsey, he, he was like, find your light. Find your light at all times, boo-boo. Find your light. Um, and, and, and Jesse commented on, she was like, the look on your face. She said, it caught me. So, blah, 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 dancer, foundation. I would come out in a show, singing, acting. I would come out of the stage door and people would go, oh my God, you're such a great dancer. Wow. Oh my God, you're such a great dancer. And it started to hurt because I'm like, is that the only way people see me? I'm putting in the work. 
They didn't do that to, to the other drifters when they would come out. They would say, oh, y'all are singing. You saw your voice, your voice. And it hurt, it hurt me so much. And I had to, I had to do some work on what dance meant to me. Cause now I was at this place in 2015, 16, after I had just directed and choreographed my first musical regionally. And as I told you before, I got a nomination for best director. Right. Oh my God, you're such a great dancer. Yeah. Wow. So I started to want to push dance Away. A little bit to the side, even in like my insert, like in my in my um, social media, I started posting less stuff with me dancing or about me dancing. And I was trying to post more stuff with me singing and my songwriting and da 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 da. Then. Ain't Too Proud happened. And Ain't Too Proud was its own journey of self. Hmm. Understanding. Yeah. Um, because when Ain't Too Proud happened and the auditions were happening, every black person I knew was being called in to audition for Ain't for the Temptations project. That's right. Ex except me. Every black person in my show, except for one, and I also understood why he wasn't being called in, but and he eventually also got called in. But every black, all the drifters in that room were called in but me all the black girls were called in but me um <laughs> and i felt a way about it and my the way i felt was they don't think i'm a good enough singer because it's the temptations huh. day before the audition one of my castmates looks at me and he's like are you going to go in for this uh are you going to this audition tomorrow or what I reached out, dance is my foundation. I reach out to the choreographer who I had worked with several times before. I was his associate, his assistant on two Broadway shows. I reached out and was like, hey, Sergio, I know you're doing this Temptations thing tomorrow. I know it's been a minute since we've been in contact but I would really like to be in the room if that's possible. I also understand that that's not okay. Send. Minute later, a minute later, not storytelling minute, an actual minute. Boop, please come. So I came and I danced. Just I, jumped, I jumped in, I was just like, boom, 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 boom. Now I'm in a too proud. And I realized I wouldn't be here without dance. Yep. And I wouldn't be here if I couldn't sing. Right. And they wouldn't have offered me, which I ended up getting. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Blessings, blessings, and blessings. Anyway, a leading role as an actor in a musical, an important musical, with some insanely talented actors, I wouldn't have been given that opportunity if I couldn't act. Yes. And so I'm thankful for my foundation of dance because you have you, you learn all of that as a dancer. You also learn how to learn. And you learn how to learn because you're always a student. Yep, yep. So my, my relationship with dance now in this moment is I'm open to all sorts of things. I, I teach for this company called Boom, which I haven't taught lately because I got sick of dancing in my apartment. But um, i so tired of dancing in my apartment. Um, but I, I love dance. I will always love dance. And right now, I let it be where it is. I don't push it. I invited, I, I just, I'm like, wherever it's going to be, it's going to be. Um, I still, in the future, I still want to choreograph because I've choreographed and I've done some really cool stuff. I've done a lot of really cool stuff. You know, that piece that I did for Gypsy of the Year for The Color mm -hmm. Purple, that won me my first 
award because yeah. that, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is a really cool thing. But people don't really know me as a choreographer. So I'm, I'm still looking forward to those moments where I get to do more stuff as a choreographer. I never want that to go away, but I'm also a director. And the first thing I actually directed was had no dance in it. It was a short play, actually two short plays. And that was just based on, of course, words. And I loved every second of it. Really? Um, I had no idea that you uh, that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I want to do more of that. Actually, one of the short plays that I directed, I just randomly talked to the writer the other day and he was just like, once I get past where I'm at right now, he's like, I have other things that I really want to talk about. So I'm glad that you reached out to me. And I was like, great. I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy. Let, let's do it. So <laughs> I I kind of have always been this way. I love everything and dance is the root of, of everything, but so much is built on top of that now that I want to do everything that I can do in the best way that I, that I can at the highest level that I can. And I'm, and I open myself to, to all of those steps. So, yeah. You know, uh, before we were talking about feeling self-actualized, mm. um, and I find that in order to be of service, in order to give back, in order to really teach, in order to really be a mentor and a real coach, there has to be a sense of satisfaction within sure. to, to give back in a way that is complete, whole, and authentic and truthful. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have a problem with feeling self-actualized. It's not, it's not, not done yet. It's not, not that they're not done yet, but um, there's something that they're bitter. There's a bitterness or a, that they're not paying attention to. It's, it might be very small. So it's not recognizable to them yet. Mm -hmm. But um, when I look at you and your career, because of your joy, every job you go into, there's a sense of self-actualization and a sense of openness of like, whatever comes next, I'm in it. Is that truly how you feel? Not that yeah. you don't have, you know, dreams and aspirations and like, who I really want to do that. But, you know, if this was, if there was an end, would you go out smiling? Yes. And I know it's funny you said that while, before Ain't Too Proud happened while I was in Beautiful and I was dealing with your people aren't seeing me beyond me being a dancer. And I was in this place where I was like, I like when I came into Beautiful, I was so happy. Because part of because a I got a job. So that's that's that thing that happens with all performers. Like you get a job and you're just like, yes, I'm working again because you some you know, you don't know when your next job is going to come. And that is the that is one of the hard parts about being an artist. But it's also one of the one of the things that helps build your backbone being an artist. And it helps you survive in this life because you have to keep searching. You have to keep going. Mm -hmm. You can't stop. Yeah. So this moment was happening with beautiful where I was just like, and they had told me I auditioned for the original production, like the out of town of beautiful. And they were like, you did a great job, but your journey with the show was over because they had found their cast. Okay. You know what I mean? Like they were like, this is a show that we're taking out of town. And I'm, yeah. and I believe in their head, especially because it basically happened. This was the show that they were bringing to Broadway, which doesn't always happen. A lot of times no. they do out of town and they're like, thank you guys very much. Recast. Yes. Um, so with Beautiful, they ended up recasting and they recast one person and that person ended up being me. And I got to come into this company. So I was just like, I walked into the room the first day and I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I did all the stuff. I was just like, open, bring it on. I'm going to do it. And it was so much fun. So now three and a half years into the run of the show, and I had a conversation with myself about that very thing. I wanted other things. Uh, as, a, as a lead, as a director, as a choreographer, as a songwriter, as a writer, 
there's a lot of things that I want. But I also said, I've been auditioning. I've been going out. I've been doing the film and television. I've been going. And I've gotten this little thing, which is cool. And I know they say there's no little thing. But yes and no. That's like a way that, that things kind of get painted. Sometimes things are little. That doesn't mean that they're not awesome. Indeed. You know what this is. You know what this is. And you know what this is. That's right. So, and I said to myself, you've had a really amazing career across the board. If the rest of your career is that this is what how it continues, you do these like cool shows and you have you're in the ensemble and you have these feature parts and da 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 and you get to do are you will you be happy? Will that be okay? And I said yes. But yeah. I know I said yes because it's been wonderful. I'm proud of everything that I've done. Yeah. Even some of the things that I didn't like. And there's very, 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 very few things in my two things in my career that I've done that I didn't like too. But I, I said, yes, I would be fine. But I'm also not going to stop working. I'm not going to stop reaching. That's right. I'm aware of what's been given to me and what I've worked for and what's come into my life because a lot of people work. There are some people that work tirelessly and it doesn't ever come. Yeah. So I'm aware and I'm thankful and I'm grateful. I'm also going to keep going for what I want. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ain't Too Proud happened. So, yes, I, I, I'm, I bring it all with me with, with joy. Cause yeah. you, you don't have to, but it's just so much better when you do. Yes. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what it's when like you don't work. actually. You because when you you know what it's like to work with people who are not in they're not in it or they're not in it from their heart. They're in it for the money. They're in it because they want the attention. And you know we could talk about. We don't have to talk about it, but we know we we've been in the room with the people that are like this is going to be my moment. And yeah. how it affects them when that moment does is not realized. Indeed. Because you were in it for the wrong reason. You weren't in it for here. Yeah. Why? Your why? They never they had they had they you know, they had the you wrong know. why. You or had they had the a different why. why that did not align, which is what this uh, whole series is called, aligned for success. <laughs> well, Alignment. Yeah. Because when we start, whenever all of us, when we start singing, dancing, acting, we're doing it because we love to do it. Yeah. We love to run around the house and sing. We love to pretend that we were a princess or a, or a doctor or a lawyer or the, a Martian from Mars. We loved dancing. We loved it. So our parents hopefully saw that or allowed us to take classes. And we were just like, hee, 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 ah. and it was all about love. Then, then the business happens and it turns into something else. And so we're not, what should still be love, it's not connecting. Yeah. It has to align. It always has to align with your heart because it's not easy. No. It's amazing, but it's not an easy business. You know that. Yeah. So if you're not in it with the, with the foundation, as hard as it can be, and as hurtful as it can be, if your foundation is not your heart. Ugh, honey, don't. because if you don't believe it, you can't sell it. What happened? What did I say? What, what was that? Hey. You know what I mean? If you don't, if curtain up, it doesn't take your breath away. So some, at least most of the time, then they're, then they won't breathe with you. Yeah. Your power, that power on stage, it's a very powerful thing to be able to channel through you and give to them as they channel through you and give to, you know what I mean? Yes. That kind of, and as you stop, they stop breathing and then you go, and then the whole audience, you can feel the whole audience exhale with you. That kind of power of storytelling, whether it's movement, whether it's the arm and the and the yeah. way you, you you manipulate music in the space yeah. and time, 
Yeah. That and right it, there. But if you're not in, in it for the artistry it. of it, then and the you, business and you will beat that. you up. You see that with, you see that with dancers. That, I'm just going to say dancers because this is where we're, we're talking about. You've worked with dancers where you can tell they're not in it because they're not doing this because they love it. And that's where, oh, it's not coming from here. It's coming from here because they want to be, who's looking at me? Fierce. That's not the same as because that's the. Yes, 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 yes. That's it's thing. not the same thing. I don't have words for that, but yes. It's not the same they're, thing. And you know what the, you know what it is when you see it. Yeah. Yes. You yes, know yes. the dancers, and and everybody loves a fierce dancer. Yeah. But you love a, a dancer who's fierce more when you know they're connected. Oh, yeah. It's connected. Aligned, aligned. <laughs> and and I've sometimes loved the dancers who don't have all the technique. But they have all of this. Yes, yes. Give me that dancer because absolutely, you 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 love it, and those dancers end up being successful because those are the dancers that people want to work with. Because your technique can get better. My technique is has gotten better working with y'all assholes, and don't bleep that out. No, 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 no. Purple, all of those assholes in the color purple. I was so intimidated working in that company. I was so intimidated. But I'm so grateful for it. My God. Because I came out of that show better than I was when I went into it. In, in all three aspects. In all three aspects, absolutely. Dance, singing, acting. Absolutely. Because that shit was hard. <laughs> bless blessings blessings oh did it oh you do do oh you do do that eh oh you do do that eh 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 eh oh god oh did it okay okay <laughs> <laughs> and a was- shushanova Ooh, what was, the hell was a Shushanova? I had never even heard of a Shushanova. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to interview Jamal's story and I'm going to blame him. Blame him. We, we all blamed him and we've all said it to him. Now you need to say it online so that we can always go back and reference it. I shall. And you know who else I'm interviewing today? The great Donald Byrd. Mm. The choreographer of the original. Intimidated. The it intimidated the hell out of me, but I'm it's grateful. Good for times. It. And so I have a question. I have two questions yeah. before we go because mm-hmm. we're coming to time. Yes. Um, do you see any innovative things happening that we should be paying attention to in the dance community specifically? You know, the thing, this place that we're in right now, being in quarantine due to COVID and the complications of it, technology. People are finding clever ways to use, and 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 artists have always found great ways to use technology. But I just think people are finding ways to tell dance through this medium specifically, and and make it powerful. In, in and make it powerful more than they've ever done so before. Because film, I feel like film and and video prior, it was a means for storytelling. But ultimately, I think people wanted especially in the dance world, they wanted you to see it live. So not that they didn't shoot well for camera, but they sh- it was like, we want the people in the seats so they can experience it. Now I'm watching the way people are, people are shifting and how they have to shoot. They're really paying attention to the angles and where things are, but not just that, like how to like, if they reach up here, Whoever's in that box is going to take that. Da, 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 da. So you're, they've created, I've, I've like saw this really cool piece that um, a theater choreographer who's, I, who's definitely going to become a, a big theater choreographer because I love his ideas. And he just did a whole like Zoom dance piece with all the boxes. And it was just great. 
like his brain was just like, you know, this would happen with one person and then the boxes would be like, bloop, 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 and then everyone would move this way and then the boxes. And it was really clever, like how he chose who moved where and what they did. And he had to sit and map all of that out. Less. And that was a lot of work, but it was really cool to watch. So this now is, is some of the innovation that I believe is happening in dance. And I'm sure that there's so much more because I'm not fully invested in, in the dance, dance world. Yeah. It's such a, it's just so vast and there's so many incredible dancers out there. And in the dance company world, I don't know. I'm sure that there were other things like Netherlands Dance Theater was one of my favorite dance companies oh. in the entire world. And they've always been innovative and they are definitely utilizing this new format yeah. to great abundance. I'm going to, I'm, you know, as I go through these interviews, I hope to find those answers, you know, in parts of the industry that we are not immediately tapped into right now, mm -hmm. you know, very curious, very, very curious because, you know, I have my own eyes and my own story, but mm -hmm. my story is one story. There's so many windows and doors to, to the same room. And then the word success you know what I mean? Like what? It's so personal. And so, so personal. seeing it through other people's eyes might be very inspirational. We, you know, it's, I'm just very curious to hear what people are seeing on the ground mm -hmm. and foreseeing, you know, oh, that's interesting because I'm in all kinds of other industries looking at innovative things, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm a big car person. So I, I, I never miss the car show and I always go mm. see the concept cars. And now I know after like 20 some, something years of doing that, that in two to in three to five, five years, more like five years, that concept car will be on the street and half of the population will have it. And mm. so as I track the flying car and that technology, as I track the electric car, but that I mean, that was years ago, that's coming no, no, no matter what, but you yeah. know, as I track in innovative things like, um, like um, other technologies and, and energy and um, money and currency mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in other industries to see even marketing and anything online to make, to make connection happen easier for entrepreneurs. Sure. It's such an artistic experience because people have to be creative. They're being creative yeah. at such a exponential rate right right now yeah. that I want to know where that's happening in in our industry sure. and what is it looking like is it not happening in which case we have to get on the ball because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm interested in that without it taking away integrity and all of those things since I'm not about anything without without it mm -hmm. but where is our industry disruptors? Where are they? Where mm. is our Uber? Where is our Airbnb? Mm. That's a really good question. Yeah. Because at some point, I'm, I'm going to have two. I'm going to have two coins to to roll around. I may want to invest in somebody something. I want to know what it is. Mm. Mm. No, but that's good. I mean, it is interesting. I think because you know with like TikTok being such a, a thing. And so, you know, you have all these individual dancers who are wanting, and just to really so understand their, their, their attention and they want their followers and stuff. So, you know, everyone when wish that I could put in their develop pay videos and, and how many turns they can do and how many crazy things that they can do and to get their, to get their, their views. So it's like, how is that? viewership how is that attention that that thing that catches your attention how is that going to be utilized in to our into the dance world beyond what it is now yes and how does that translate into long longevity right because this this time that we're in i mean covid has shifted and it's not going away tomorrow it's not going away next year no. You know, it's going to take it's going to take a second. I truly believe it's going to take longer than we think for it to really, really be a thing where we're not constantly thinking about it and that you're sitting in some place and someone goes <coughs> and everyone's 
not, right now people just do this. Yeah. Because now a cough means COVID. Yeah. Cough means potentially death in two weeks. But, that's really, right. I mean, that's really, <laughs> it's broad, broad no, but People freak out or you sneeze or you, or you sniffle or you wipe your face and our, our brain has just shifted so quickly to it. And I'm like, you could just have a, a, an itch in your, in your, in your throat, which yeah. I've had. And I've been not wanting to cough sometimes because I don't want people to think that they're, I don't want people to be uncomfortable exactly. around me. And that's a that's crazy thing. thing. So if we can't get past just that in day-to-day life, it's going to take a bit of time before we're in a place where something that we're more used to. Yeah. So all this stuff that we're using now, Zoom, da 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 all of that stuff is going to be much more prevalent in our industries for, for the long haul. Yeah. You know, I'm concerned, my curiosity is, what are auditions for dancers going to be like? Yeah. I, I, I hope to get that answer in some of these interviews. You know? I really do, because what is happening? Yeah, because, like, you can do it singing and acting. You can do that easily online. Dance is a very different thing because... I mean, it's happening. It's happening. But... Not the same as being in the room, because when you need to give a correction... Like you can teach someone your choreography and this is, you know, and if you're going to do it via Zoom, first of all, you know what it looks like when you're trying to teach a class on Zoom. Everyone's okay. moving at a little, at a slightly different time to the music. So, and if you have more than 10 people on the screen, it's really impossible to look at each person properly. Yes. So if that's what auditions are going to be like, A, it's going to take all day <laughs> to really properly do it because then you have to do it one to really get a clear look you're gonna have to go one by one and then you can't how do you go well no because it really yeah, and 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 that doesn't look the same on screen nope. as it does in person nope. so then say you get these people and then you get them in the room room and you're just like oh <laughs> Uh. I mean, yay, but it looks so much different on camera. Yeah. Because you know your angles. Bless. I know. We will figure this out. We will figure yeah. this out. You know, I, I just have to ask the questions to the right people, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm not the right person. No, no. <laughs> I, Lord knows, I don't know. Um, before we go, because we're at time. Yes. Who do you think I should interview next? Bahia. Bahia. Bahia Saeed. One of the divas of dance, period. And there's so many. Yeah. Um, then I would say Karin. Of course, of course. I, you, know, I, you know, I have both of their names down. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, going into my, net, my network of people, I was like, well. <laughs> Bow and bow. Bow and bow. I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for, for your time and for connecting with me. And I love you. I always have. Likewise. And um, I'm going to make sure that all of my students, no matter when and where they are, they know who you are. That's what I have to say. <laughs> and then they're going to go on my Instagram and go, oh, 4,000. Next. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. I'm sort of kind of not kidding. <laughs> Social media is such a crazy thing. It's a crazy thing. Numbers are a crazy thing. And I really have to, getting back to self, actually self-actualization and, and self-awareness is, I'm still struggling with the just going, it is what it is. All you can do is be you and put out what you believe in from your heart. Yes. And it's going to land where it's going to land. That's right. Because we've, we're now in this place where it's like the, the higher your numbers are, clearly the better you are. No. And that's not always the case. No, it's not. So I have to just keep going, James. Yeah. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah. So thank you. You are enough. Thank you, my love. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. You too. Mwah. Dance and joy, y'all. <laughs>